On Tuesday, the House Judiciary Committee held a hearing on the supposed rise of white nationalism and hate crimes, and the thing was pure circusry. I'm sure by now you've seen at least part of the feature presentation in which a black female became the implied new face of Adolf Hitler. I don't know Miss Owens. I'm not going to characterize her. I'm going to let her own words do the talking. Whenever we say nationalism, the first thing people think about, in, at least in America, is Hitler. If Hitler just wanted to make Germany great and have things run well, okay, fine. The problem is, is that he wanted, he had dreams outside of Germany. I think it's pretty apparent that uh, Mr. Liu believes that black people are stupid and will not f uh, pursue the full clip in its entirety. Witness may not refer to a member of the committee as stupid. I didn't refer to him as stupid. That's not what I said. That's not what I said at all. You, you didn't listen to what I said. If I could only pick one image to symbolize this entire show, it'd be this one, the old smug shrug from committee chairman Jerry Nadler, the gesture with which he dismissively deflects any inconvenient facts thrown his way. Was this hearing about exposing any actual truth, or was it just about smearing Jerry Nadler and friends' political adversaries? Well, it certainly wasn't about any principled opposition to hate, because as soon as a witness brought up Ilhan Omar, hey, shut that guy up, his time is over. I was horrified to see Speaker Pelosi, Leader Hoyer, defend Representative Omar after her vicious anti-Semitic remarks and, pre and presidential... And the gentleman's time has expired. That was unfair. It was not unfair. You had plenty of extra time. And of course, the show was irresistible troll bait. Propping yourself up on the pedestal of fighting hate speech is really just begging to be knocked down with hate speech. And so the masses did exactly that in such numbers that YouTube just banned the live chat outright, not just on the committee's own stream, but reportedly on other streams covering the hearing as well. But beyond this hearing being a complete farce, a show in which we demonize black people as supposed secret agents of the white supremacist overlords and censor discussion outright as a way to moderate supposed extremist views, beyond all the absurd and comedy in practice, the underreported thing about this hearing is just how faulty it was in premise. What is the purpose for this hearing? Why is everybody gathered round for nearly four hours on the taxpayer dime? Why is this comedy routine even necessary at all? Jerry Nadler explained why in his introductory remarks, but to make that justification, he had to use several inaccurate premises, ranging from embellished or misleading to outright false. And so as much as I do enjoy the jokes and the trolling and the comedy, this is the sort of stuff that we can't let them get away with because the end result is much less funny. They want to censor. They want to control. They want to restrict the liberty of each and every one of us. And when the stakes are that high, it's important that we don't grant their base premises any legitimacy when they have none at all. Nadler begins with a familiar talking point that hate crimes are on the rise in this country, and that's the reason we're all here. Unfortunately, various statistics confirm what most of us have observed that hate incidents are increasing in the United States. Although reporting of hate crimes to the FBI by the states is woefully incomplete, what we do know is that these statistics have been on the rise in recent years, with hate crimes surging 20% last year, and the plurality of these crimes, 29%, being motivated by anti-black bias. This narrative is very carefully crafted. To be technically correct, but entirely misleading. It is true that the total hate crimes included in the FBI's annual hate crime statistics release have increased in recent years, but there are a few crucial additional details to observe. That increase is measured relative to the low point of hate crimes in the history of the FBI's data collection in 2014. You'll notice that overall, hate crimes are actually well below levels they were reported at in the 90s and early 2000s. And keep in mind, these figures are just raw counts. They aren't per capita numbers. So we see less hate crimes now than before, with a population that's grown 16% since the turn of the millennium. So while it's technically correct, Nadler's point is highly historically selective, but I'll grant that technicality for a moment because there's even more dishonesty to discuss. We have seen a bit of a hate crime bump lately, according to the FBI, but the question then becomes why? Is it legitimately Trump's rhetoric inspiring these acts, as Nadler will claim momentarily, or 
Are there other factors at play? Well, the FBI does give us a highly plausible answer if Jerry Nadler had bothered to read the actual report at all, and it's related to one of his key premises. He is right that state and local police department reporting to the FBI on hate crimes is incomplete, but he doesn't tell you it's improving every year. Each year, the FBI gets more police agencies contributing to its hate crime reporting. More agencies participating means you aren't getting an apples to apples comparison year by year. And for exactly this reason, the FBI cautions against making simple year to year comparisons in the data without considering that important detail. A lot of the difference between the most recent 2017 report and the prior year, for example, can be explained by the fact that almost a thousand more police agencies participated in the newer report than in the prior one. And we don't know exactly what those new agencies are. That effect can be magnified if those new agencies are high population jurisdictions with a lot of crime to report. Based on the FBI, own explanation, we shouldn't conclude that larger numbers in their reports automatically mean that more hate crimes are happening. It's likely explained just by more local police departments now reporting them to the feds. But don't let the facts get in the way of Nadler's narrative. It's all Trump's fault. And he has more evidence for you. He says the Christchurch shooter was a Trump supporter. White nationalist groups target communities of color and religious minorities through social media platforms. These platforms are utilized as conduits to spread vitriolic hate messages into every home and country. As the New Zealand attack showed, some hateful ideological rhetoric that originates in the United States is now used to inspire terror worldwide. In a time when decisive leadership is needed, the president's rhetoric fans the flames with language that, whether intentional or not, may motivate and embolden white supremacist movements. For example, the New Zealand shooter declared that he supports President Trump, quote, as a symbol of renewed white identity and common purpose, close quote. Just like the last case, this quote is technically correct, but misleading and stripped of context. Nadler cuts his quote right before the following sentence in the shooter's manifesto, in which he says, Dear God, no, I don't support Donald Trump as a policymaker or leader. Additionally, the shooter says he considers himself left-wing in some regards, right-wing in others. He's even warm to the label socialist, depending on the context. Pinning his actions solely on one particular political philosophy or person is dishonest weaponization of his terrorism, further victimizing others beyond those he already victimized in Christchurch. But yes, Mr. Nadler, you're the moral hero here, so tell me more about how your political opponents are actually the greatest threat we face. It appears that federal law enforcement agencies have not taken the deadly and increasing dangers posed by white nationalist hate groups as seriously as foreign terrorist threats. The Center for Investigative Reporting analyzed incidents of domestic terrorism occurring from January 2008 to December 2016. It found that there were nearly twice as many attacks perpetrated or attempted by right-wing extremists, 115, compared to those identified as Islamists domestic terrorism, 63. The report Nadler is referencing does reach this finding, that apparently right-wing terror plots or attacks outnumbered Islamist attacks by a two-to-one margin in the United States between 2008 and 2016, but again, a few crucial caveats. The methodology in this report looks highly suspect. How the researchers classified incidents ideologically is not clearly explained and doesn't look reliable. For instance, the 2014 Elliot Rogers shooting in Isla Vista, California, is classified as right-wing. Why? Because Elliot Roger googled Nazis once, apparently, despite the fact that his manifesto was about being rejected by women, not politics. But hey, the Southern Poverty Law Center says it's legit right-wing terrorism, so there you go. I'm sure it is. Some of the other entries in this report are just plain misclassified. For instance, one case in Houston is labeled as Islamist in the author's description, but shows up on their map as right-wing. Additionally, there are several known Islamist plots or attacks that are just outright missing from this report. In 2016, a self-radicalized Islamist attacked a Columbus, Ohio restaurant with a machete. In 2015, an ISIS-inspired student attacked four people with a hunting knife on the campus of UC Merced. In 2009, the FBI busted four Islamic terrorists plotting to shoot down military airplanes and blow up two synagogues in New York City. And these are only a few examples of missing cases I was able to identify briefly with the little bit of time I did have to compare this list to lists of 
of other known Islamic terror incidents in the U.S. over the same time period. So the report Nadler references has some serious questions about how it counts its incidents, and it looks like it cares more about pushing a narrative than it does about the actual truth. But even if it is accurate, Nadler's conclusion still has some major problems. Let's say his conclusion is true, that in the United States, right-wing extremist or white nationalist terrorism does outnumber Islamic terrorism by two to one. But let's remember, that figure is just a raw number. It's not per capita. It's not adjusted for population. It's not at all surprising that in a majority white country, most of the people committing any crime are white, regardless of political views. The question we should be asking is in a country that is only 1% Muslim, how are these numbers even comparable? If Islamic terrorism isn't a problem comparatively, shouldn't all other forms of terrorism outnumber Islamic terror by about 99 to 1, not 2 to 1? But I suppose that's a hate fact, and it's time for Jerry Nadler to cut my mic and YouTube to disable comments. But make no mistake, none of this is actually about hate at all. It's about preserving a narrative at the expense of the truth by using hate as a way to malign certain pieces of factual information they don't want people to consider informing their own opinions for themselves. I wish I could ask Jerry Nadler, if this really is about informing the public, why did you omit the totality of the FBI's hate crimes data? And why did you omit the FBI's instructions on how to interpret the data properly? Why did you cut your quote from the Christchurch shooter precisely at the point where the next sentence undermines your narrative? Why are you presenting 1% of the population committing a third of the terrorist attacks as a comparatively small problem instead of a disproportionately large problem? Yeah, I think we know the answer we would Get. The so, gentleman's time has expired. Not only are they lying to us, but we're paying them to do it. Of all the hilarious jokes on Display Tuesday, that's the biggest one. Thanks, as always, for listening and for supporting this channel. Always appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to come hang out and chat in my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Goodbye. Okay,